Section Zero of Southern Horrors, Lynch Law in All Its Phases. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by James K. White. Southern Horrors, Lynch Law in All Its Phases by Ida B. Wells. Preface and Honorable Frederick Douglass's Letter. Preface The greater part of what is contained in these pages was published in the New York Age, June 25, 1892, in explanation of the editorial which the Memphis Whites considered sufficiently infamous to justify the destruction of my paper, The Free Speech. Since the appearance of that statement, requests have come from all parts of the country that exiled, the name under which it then appeared, be issued in pamphlet form. Some donations were made, but not enough for that purpose. The noble effort of the ladies of New York and Brooklyn, October 5, have enabled me to comply with this request and give the world a true, unvarnished account of the causes of lynch law in the South. This statement is not a shield for the despoiler of virtue, nor altogether a defense for the poor blind Afro-American Samsons who suffer themselves to be betrayed by white Delilahs. It is a contribution to truth, an array of facts, the perusal of which it is hoped will stimulate this great American republic to demand that justice be done though the heavens fall. It is with no pleasure I have dipped my hands in the corruption here exposed. Somebody must show that the Afro-American race is more sinned against than sinning, and it seems to have fallen upon me to do so. The awful death roll that Judge Lynch is calling every week is appalling, not only because of the lives it takes, the rank cruelty and outrage to the victims, but because of the prejudice it fosters and the stain it places against the good name of a weak race. The Afro-American is not a bestial race. If this work can contribute in any way toward proving this, and at the same time arouse the conscience of the American people to a demand for justice to every citizen, and punishment by law for the lawless, I shall feel I have done my race a service. Other considerations are of minor importance. Ida B. Wells, New York City, October 26, 1892 To the Afro-American women of New York and Brooklyn, whose race love, earnest zeal, and unselfish effort at Lyric Hall in the city of New York on the night of October 5, 1892, made possible its publication, this pamphlet is gratefully dedicated by the author. Honorable Frederick Douglass's Letter Dear Miss Wells, Let me give you thanks for your faithful paper on the lynch abomination now generally practiced against colored people in the South. There has been no word equal to it in convincing power. I have spoken, but my word is feeble in comparison. You give us what you know and testify from actual knowledge. You have dealt with the facts with cool, painstaking fidelity and left those naked and uncontradicted facts to speak for themselves. Brave woman, you have done your people and mine a service which can neither be weighed nor measured. If American conscience were only half alive, if the American church and clergy were only half Christianized, if American moral sensibility were not hardened by persistent infliction of outrage and crime against colored people, a scream of horror, shame, and indignation would rise to heaven wherever your pamphlet shall be read. But alas, even crime has power to reproduce itself and create conditions favorable to its own existence. It sometimes seems we are deserted by earth and heaven, yet we must still think speak and work and trust in the power of a merciful god for final deliverance very truly and gratefully yours frederick douglas cedar hill anacostia d c october twenty five eighteen ninety two end of section zero recording by james k white chula vista